So we've been part of a really fascinating conversation with uh, people from across the industry in Floating Wind. Um, and there were a few key themes that came out. The idea that we really need to crack the infrastructure um, issue. So how are we going to unlock the supply chain? And that is something that really needs to be done collaboratively. Um, we have to work with the, the developers, uh, the technology companies, the turbine suppliers. I think there were uh, quite a few interesting points that were made uh, during this session. Uh, in my opinion, I think the pool is going to come from the fact that it's going to provide access to uh, much better wind resources. There's still a lot of focus on kind of making the smart concepts. Uh, where I think we should watch out a little bit is we, we now need to start to make this consolidate into more uh, or fewer concepts because uh, having 60 or 70 different concepts is really not easy and that will not work in the long run. I think the key element of, of floating wind is that it's going to be able to globalize offshore wind. So basically it's going to increase the market by more than 10 times. And also what I take from today's uh, workshop is that uh, we're going to see it much quicker than, than expected and that the industry is ramping up uh, really quick and that in the coming 10 years we're going to have a huge uh, amount of power produced by floating wind. We need to start ex sharing experiences and, and also uh, maybe create some more transparency on what works and what do not work, etc. What we've seen in floating wind is, is, is the argument that floating wind is applicable for deep water. But actually, one of the really interesting things that came out today is that there may be um, low-hanging fruit in, in other sectors as well. So how can floating wind support oil and gas production? How can floating wind unlock maybe marginal uh, regions uh, where there's a requirement for small amounts of power? And, and that's fascinating, the fact that we're starting to see different user cases uh, through this technology, something that we, we hadn't seen um, even two years ago. People were very surprised with uh, the production of deep water wells and that's really what drove the whole oil and gas industry to move into deeper water and I think the, the same thing is going to be happening here with uh, floating offshore wind. So in helping our clients manage risk we've been involved in lots of first of types from the first nuclear power plant to the first floating uh, production oil facility to more recently the first um, floating LNG facility of Australia. And what we've seen through that is that there's a really important role in an independent regulator um, body that's able to, to play that role between the different stakeholders. And we're going to see the same with offshore wind. As we get to scale, we're going to need to bring those bodies together and understand how we can work together to really unlock this industry.